Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, interesting video today. We're gonna watch Is Christianity Idolatry? A Rabbi Speaks. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. About Christianity, a huge difference between two kinds of believers in Christianity. Something that blew my mind when I realized that thing. Something that is not famous and not known in the world. Something so important to realize. And I'll tell you that thing. Jewish people considering Christians as idols worshippers. Why? Because Jewish people, first of all, they don't know Christianity. The majority of Jewish people, they don't know. We've never been taught Christians' rules and to know if it's wrong or right. Like, we just know that it's wrong. It's a different religion. And the rabbis that taught us, and in the books, and that's the halacha, is saying to us that Christianity is wrong, is a mistake, and it's not the right way. So Jewish people are staying away from Christianity. They don't want to taste it, they don't want to smell it, they don't want to hear about it. They know it's wrong and we don't want nothing to do with that. First, okay, can understand it, can respect that. You don't want to get anything foreign into your house. Can respect that, it's beautiful. But there is- I wouldn't say it's foreign whatsoever. I wouldn't say Christianity is foreign to Judaism whatsoever. I would say that Christianity is intrinsically Jewish. But. There is something to realize. Not all Christians are answering to that prototype of worshipping idols as the Gemara and the Talmud are presenting them. Because there might be a difference that is tremendous, that is huge. There are oh, people in Christianity who believes that Jesus is God. That is their faith. I think it's called Trinity. They believe that, that Jesus, he is God. Now, for Jewish people to say that a man is God, that's a mistake. For us, like, that is the answer when we hear about someone like that, that that person is saying, that man was no man. He was not a man. He was God. It's God. He was God and he is God and he will always stay God. For us, simple Jewish people that are following halakha, that's a mistake. Based on the teachings and learnings I've been exposed yeah. to, to. I mean, he mentions the Gemara and the Talmud there and says that per definition, it's not the same idolatry. But I mean, let's be honest here. If you say a man is a God, how much more idolatrous can you become? The that we inherit from our ancestors you can never say that something else except for God is God. You cannot. But you have yeah. millions or maybe even hundreds of millions of Christian people who does not follow that law of Trinity. And they will never say that Jesus is God. Just they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. They believe that he is the yeah. Messiah. Yeah, the rabbi here advertised this as something groundbreaking, something absolutely mind-blowing that we never heard before. But matter of fact, I spoke about this numerous times on my channel. I mentioned this with the Orthodox Christian on the Balkan specifically, but this applies to most Christians that I encountered throughout my lifetime. Most normie Christians have no idea about the philosophical, the Greek philosophical concept of the Trinity, nor do they believe that Jesus actually is a God. Most Christians will go to the extent to say that Jesus is the Son of God without truly implying that he is the physical Son of God. They simply heard this term and they repeat it. However, most Christians will never say or never think of Jesus actually being God. Indeed, I even make the claim that most Christians are absolutely shocked once you introduce the idea of Jesus being God to them, because they simply didn't grow up like this. Nevertheless, this is not a new concept, dear Rabbi, we spoke about this a billion times. The Messiah, they believe that he is the Mashiach. Now I'm going to tell you something, listen, I'll call another Jewish person 
who thinks that a certain rabbi, he is the Mashiach. He is the real true Mashiach. And let's say that in the end of days, we're going to realize that that rabbi that he believed in, that he was the Mashiach and about to be revealed, died and was not the Mashiach in the end. On that Jewish person, we will not say that he is a kofer, that he is like no, the same word. not Jewish. Kufar. We're not going to disqualify his Judaism for his faith in a false Mashiach. So how come we going to disqualify the faith of a Christian person in a false Mashiach based on our understanding that that man was not Mashiach? It's only to say that he is wrong, but it's not giving us the ability to say on him that he is an idol worshiper, because he's not worshiping. He does not yeah, say well. that... So now he's not speaking about Christianity, but he speaks about individual Christians, as I mentioned already, that simply don't believe that Jesus is God. But nevertheless, he's making a false equivalent here because he says, okay, there could be a Jewish person that believes a rabbi is indeed the Messiah, but that rabbi is not the Messiah. However, that Jewish person then would still follow the Jewish laws, the Mosaic laws, and the Christians abandoned the laws as well. So therefore, modern-day Christians cannot be simply seen as Jews that follow the wrong Messiah. This is definitely not it. Christianity as such is now a new religion and very different from Judaism, of course. He's just saying that that man, he is the Mashiach. Maybe it's clear for you above 100% that that man is not Bashir, but still it does not make that person an idol's worshiper. We're trying to create tolerance. We're just trying to create a place in our hearts to understand that people are coming from different backgrounds, with different faith systems, with different beliefs, and they also might be wrong. Also, that assumption might be totally wrong, but you will not going to disqualify and erase a person because of him being wrong. All right, guys, and this is already it for this short clip. I like what he said in the end here, of course, he's calling for tolerance, etc. But nevertheless, his description of Christianity is not factual. He speaks about individual Christians. Sure, you will find individual Christians, as I said, that don't believe that Jesus is God, and they will simply believe that he is the Messiah. Matter of fact, most Christians don't even know that, honestly. At least on the Balkan, if you speak to them, they don't even know what the Messiah is. They simply address Jesus as the Son of God, and that's that. However, he says that you cannot call them idol worshippers. Well, maybe not in the original sense. Maybe not like the idol worshippers of the Arabian Peninsula when they were pagans. However, you do have elements of idolatry within Christianity, of course. If you enter a church, for example, you will see idols, even though they're not treated as idols and they're called icons or statues and they're not being worshipped but quote-unquote venerated. Nevertheless, it is the same thing ultimately and therefore to say that they are not idol worshippers, maybe not at heart, if you will, because I know that most Christians simply believe in one God at heart, but in practice, they do have elements of idol worship. This is something that is not debatable. This at least applies to the Catholics and to the Orthodox Christians. The Protestants are not engaged in such idolatry, if you will. But nevertheless, theologically, they still teach the Trinity. They still teach the Son of God, that Jesus is God, etc., etc., you name it. So to sum it all up, this rabbi ultimately has good intentions. I understand what he is doing there. He's speaking to the normies and therefore he tells the normies to not dive into further theological discussions and simply take the people from where they are coming, from where they are standing. I absolutely understand that. However, if we look into the doctrines, into the theology, we have to point out what is right and what is wrong, what is true and what is false. All right, guys, but this is it for today's short video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh